For the last few years, I've been using the phrase, you are always only one layer away from magic. Knowing that has been one of the most freeing experiences I've had as a creator. Hi everybody, this is Seth Apter coming to you from my studio in New York City. I'm here today to share with you a little bit more about who I am as an artist. People often ask me what it means to be a mixed media artist. And every time I get asked that question, I know I'm not gonna be able to give an answer that really does it justice. If I had to sum up mixed media in one word, I would say freedom. Anything goes. There really are no rules. At its core, it's basically just using more than one art medium together in the same artwork, but it's really so much more than that. To me, it is all about layers. And every layer guides me to be able to create the next layer. I always say, listen to what the layer tells you. A lot of time it's adding layers, but it could just as easily be subtracting and taking away layers. I am guided by the work that I do. I put one color down, one piece of collage, one found object, whatever it may be, and that element tells me where to go next. I am always building. So whatever starts the piece directs me for what goes next. I like to look at the art that I make in the same way that I look at people. I think we are who we are on the outside because of who we are on the inside. What people see on the top surface of a piece of art is also all about what's underneath it. I love to say that more is more because I am all about the layers and I am all about the details. Now, I also often say more is more little by little. And what I mean by that is that the layers that you're building up to create that bounty of creativity, I like to do them little by little, subtly. I think that when you begin to take it slow, little by little, to create your more is more, that's when the magic starts happening. I find the work that I do is different depending upon what I'm creating it for and what I'm creating. So for example, for me, I am at my most free when I work in a journal or a book. There's just something about it that lets me let go and completely work organically. It might be because I think of journals and books as storytelling. And so my aim is just to tell my story. Maybe when I'm journaling, it's because most of my journals are about putting my feelings out there, expressing it, even just to myself or the page. And there's something I think freeing about that. And also in a book or a journal, you got lots of pages. And I think that lots of people get caught up in thinking that their art is precious. If you're working on one large panel, you got one chance. If you're working in a book with 60 pages, you got 60 pages back and front. You got 120 chances on paper. So I think there's something very freeing about that. I tend to be a very linear, structured artist. And in the beginning, when I was trying to find my voice, that really bothered me because I was always attracted to artwork from other artists that was very loose and free and organic. And I felt compelled to push myself in that direction. And what became clear pretty quickly was that that is just not quite who I am or how I create. What has happened over the years once I let go of that is that I have found, in fact, that my artwork has become looser and freer and less linear. But what it's really become is a blend. I often say that overthinking is the death of creativity. And what I mean by that in mixed media is that thinking too much takes you out of the zone. I feel like the times that I get into the zone, I get into the groove, and I am just creating, really without even thinking what I'm doing, that is when I create my most organic work, the work that I look back on and am most satisfied with. Art for me is really community-based and collaborative in nature. And I mean that in so many different ways. So for example, Working alone in my studio, 
creating a piece, let's say a painting, and I work on it for a while, I put it aside, I come back to it, eventually, intuitively, I sense that it's done. Typically for me, the next thing I do is sign it. Somewhere along the way, a title's come to me, sometimes from the very beginning, sometimes at some point while I'm working, and sometimes after it's done, and that title goes on the piece as well. But I don't really look at it as if it's done yet. For me, the last step for an artwork is to have eyes on it. There's something about putting your art into the world and sharing it. It could be on social media, could be in a gallery, could be by somebody purchasing it and taking it home. But the idea that there's a viewer out there looking back on what I've done feels to me like it makes the artwork complete. There's a, there's a sense that as I create these works, I am sharing and telling my story. And stories do need to be told, but I feel like stories also need to be heard. So once that story is heard, the viewer sees my piece, then I feel like the artwork is done. For the last few years, I've been using the phrase, you are always only one layer away from magic. And I think that for me, knowing that has been one of the most freeing experiences I've had as a creator. The whole idea that you're working away, maybe you're not loving what you're doing, maybe it's not going in the direction that you want. You're having a hard time letting go and getting more frustrated. You step away, you come back, the same thing happens. In my head, knowing that, sometimes all I need to do is literally add one more layer. It could be paint, ink, marks, stamps, collage, it could be anything. You add one more layer and you've hit it. It's magic. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to what I had to share today.